Hey guys, it's Craig here, and welcome back to Vinyl TV. So, this channel is called Vinyl TV because we talk mostly about vinyl and turntables and stuff like that. But the truth of the matter is, in order to get one of these, you first have to record something. That's what we're going to talk about today. Now, I'm going to kind of try to focus a little bit on home recording. Uh, particularly what I used to use to record some of my music. I am a songwriter, um, musician. I play the keyboards, I sing, play the drums. And I spent a lot of my younger years recording, writing, recording songs. And of course, you know, you don't have a lot of money. You can't get into recording studios. You can't afford to, you know, to record your stuff. So you got to kind of do it. Uh, you kind of kind of build your own little studio and back in the 80s that was that involved you know we didn't have the computers then that we do now so let's start with this this is a uh digital audio recorder these are two three four hundred dollars they're not that expensive this one is only a two track recorder which means it just does stereo and what it is it's a you know it's a tape recorder basically but it's digital so um, the quality is outstanding. It's amazing. Uh, it records at very high resolutions. <clears throat> it's got microphones on the top. Or you can plug in an audio source here. Now, some of these, you can get them with more than two tracks. You know, two tracks means it's stereo. Uh, you can get them with four tracks, six tracks, eight tracks, and even more. So when we're talking about tracks, what do we mean by that? Well... Back in the 50s and early 60s, when a band recorded, like let's just take the Beatles for example, or others, um, they didn't have a lot of versatility. They had to, uh, they had one microphone. The Beatles had more, That I think we're talking back more in the 50s here. They had one microphone. They had the musicians, the drummer, the guitar player, the bass player, uh, possibly background singers and a, a lead singer maybe uh, something else, a violinist or something. And they had one microphone. So they had to record everything all at the same time. And in order to do that, they had to position people in the room a certain way. So the drummer would be way over there because the drums are loud. And the singer would be right here because the singer's not that loud. And the guitarist would be over there and the bass player maybe, you know, and they positioned the microphone in a certain way so that it would block certain instruments. And, and they had to basically equalize all of the instruments in the room as it was being recorded. They didn't have the option to do it later like we do now. So that was quite a feat and it required a lot of talent and a lot of... Um, knowledge and experience from the engineer that was doing that so when you hear an old recording like an old elvis recording or you know whatever you you're, you're hearing something that was you know they they mixed it in the room they had the instruments placed just so so that they hit the microphone at the right level well things changed back in the back in the 60s and um, they ended up with uh, more than one microphone in the room they had two microphones, and then three, and then four. And then what they did was they recorded each instrument on a separate track. Now, what that means is that, you know, the bass player had his own space on the tape. The drummer had his own space on the tape. The singer had his own space on the tape. And the guitarist had his own space on the tape, and so on. So that then they could go back and play it back, and they could listen to these four tracks... And turn the bass up, turn the drums down, turn the singer up, turn the guitar up, turn the disc down. They could equalize and, and, and mix um, uh, the sound, all the different instruments, afterwards, after the recording was, was already done. Which was good, because then, you know, that, that didn't... Because they could, they could play the song through with one microphone, and it was awesome! But the levels weren't right. They could, Bass player has to move his amp back a little bit because it's too loud, and so on. This way, with the multiple tracks, they could um, you know, they could just record everything and then go back later and equalize all the levels of, between all the different instruments. And that's what uh, that really revolutionized recording. 
Now, I'm going to show you something here, and we're going to talk about this. Back in, um, you know, the mid to late 80s, I was recording songs uh, of my own. And uh, I didn't have a lot of money, and I didn't have a lot of microphones, and so I had to do what I could with what I had. And I ended up with this. I can... <clears throat> Oops. This is a four-track cassette recorder. And this is what I used to record most of, a lot of, my music. I'm going to play you a short clip right now of one of the songs that was recorded with this piece of equipment. Now that doesn't sound too bad. Eh, you know, not bad. Most people don't realize that that was done on something like this. You know, you pop a cassette in here. I don't know which, how, to, how to open this thing, but you pop a cassette. And I used um, these cassettes here, these Denon uh, HD8 cassettes, because I found that these were the best quality cassettes I could find, better than Maxell, better than TDK. Um, these are metal particle cassettes, but they're not metal bias cassettes. So you could you could use these in a normal uh, cassette recorder that didn't have metal a metal setting on it, um, and they'd sound excellent. And that's this is what I used. And that's kind of one of the ways I got the recordings to sound so good is that I used the highest quality cassettes I could find. So to like sort of you know bring you to the to the present time you know this is only four tracks now it went from four to, to eight tracks and not to be confused with eight track tapes studios went to eight tracks and then 16 tracks and then 24 and of course nowadays we have unlimited tracks because it's all on computers um but the the more tracks you have the more instruments you can record and they can have their own their own track. So if you have, let's just say, an, a 16 track or a 24 track studio, you can put the drums, you know, the bass drum on one track, the snare drum on another track, the toms on another track, the hi hats on another other track. And so that later on, when you're playing it back, you can tweak and balance the levels between all of these different instruments. Same as the guitar, the bass, you know, if there's a keyboard. Um, another guitar, vocals, background vocals, all that stuff, they each go on their own their own lane of the highway, if you will. And then and then you can later on, when you play that back, you use one of these, it's a mixer, to adjust each instrument. There's the guitar there. We'll put the bass a little lower, and the drums have to be over there. And then you can use this these little controls up here to place the instruments somewhere within the stereo spectrum, stereo field. So you can put the guitar over here, you can put the bass in the middle, you can put the keyboard over here, and so on, just by using these knobs over here, right? So that's how things got. And now with digital technology and computers, well, it's all done on the screen, or it's a lot of people, some people have mixers that they use to, you know, to do it, but it's, it's still recording, uh, recording onto a computer. But back in this day, we didn't have computers like that. So when I was, you know, 18, 20, 22 years old, it was this baby. That's all we had. And this cost me $500 and it was used. So basically, this has only got four tracks. So how did I get drums, keyboards, string track, vocals, bass, background vocals, stuff onto only four tracks? This is the se the secret. This is the magic about these things. If you really know how to use them, you can stretch them to, you know, a, a, a point where people don't believe that you even recorded it on a four track. 
So um, this is how these work, okay? Basically what you do, you pop in a cassette. I don't even know how to eject this thing. It's probably broken somehow. It does work, by the way, but it's, you know. Um, you pop in a cassette and you plug microphones in and whatnot and drum machines. And I did use a drum machine in most of my music because I didn't have the ability to properly mic drums. In other words, I couldn't get real drums to sound good with just the one microphone I had. So I chose to use uh, drum machines and I tried to make the songs sound as, you know, the drums sound as realistic as possible, but you know, it's not easy to do. What you do is you record something on track one. Okay, where's track one? I think, we're, are we missing something here? No, this is track one here. This is your master volume here. So track one, you press record on track one and, or that's probably up here somewhere. I can't remember how to use this thing. And you record. So let's say you record your drums on track one. So you plug your drum machine in, you have your drums all all sequenced and laid out, and you know, everything properly done. You plug it in, you press record, you record your drum machine, right? This is the way we used to do it. I used to actually make money off of this. I used to, guys used to come in because they wanted to record their songs. They'd bring their guitar and their amplifier and they'd have the song they wanted to record. And, you know, I charged them $10. Did not, didn't matter how long it took to record their song. Um, I just say, 10 bucks, you're good. And uh, I have a lot of guitar chords because of that, because they used to leave their guitar chords. They forget them. And uh, now I have a whole box of guitar chords. But anyway, that was back in the 80s. <laughs> so you record something on track one, like a drums or something like that. And then what you do is you play that back and you listen to it through the headphones. You hear it. And while you're listening to it, you record something on track two like a keyboard, right? So now you've got two things recorded. You've got drums on this one, and you've got keyboards on that one, and you can adjust the levels between them. You can make the drums louder, you can make the keyboard softer, whatever you want to do, right? So then you play those two back, and you record something on the third track, probably the bass on track three. That's you know usually what I did. So now you've got three tracks. And you've only got one more track left. So the problem with that is that you've got vocals that you have to do, maybe two vocals, maybe three, because you might want to do harmonies or background vocals. And then you might want to do like a pad, a string pad, or a, a, some sort of a synthesizer track or something like that. Well, you've only got one more track, so you, you can't do all those things on one track. So what you do is you take these three tracks... And you, you level them out so they all sound equal and they all are the, you know, appropriate levels. And you bounce them. They call it bouncing. You bounce them over to track four. So all three of those tracks now are combined onto one track. Right? So now, these three tracks, you can erase and record over them. Aha! So now, you have three instruments on here. Now you've got three more tracks. I can do a string pad or a synthesizer pad. I can do a vocal. I can do a guitar on these three tracks. Or I could just do a string pad and a guitar. And then I could bounce these two over to this track. So now I have drums, key, drums, keyboards, and bass on this track. I've got guitar and synthesizer on this track. That's six. Tracks. What is it? No, five. It's five tracks. Right? And then I've got this track. I can do vocals on here, and I can do harmony on this track. That's seven tracks off out of a four-track recorder. And that's how you do it. Now, the problem with that is that when you put three things on one track, like drums, bass, keyboard, they're all going to be in the middle. You can't... If you... If you, if you pan them to the left or the right, they're all going to go on the left or the right. You can't separate them anymore. And that's a problem, because it, 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 things sound kind of narrow and mo, mo, you know mono when you do it like that. But that's how they used to have to do it back in the day, in the Beatle days. Right? 
So that's why a lot, a lot of times when you listen to the Beatles, the drums are in the left, the vocals are in the right, and it's, you know, crazy because they, they remixed these four-track recordings, uh, but they weren't really made to be mixed in stereo, but that's the way they did it. So, you know. Um, anyway, so the pr that's the problem. So what I used to do, and I'll play you another clip in a minute, and I'll give you a link down in the description to, to more of my music if you want to hear more stuff that was recorded with this machine. Because uh, this thing got me through a lot of songs. I'll tell you right now, this was a workhorse for me. What I used to do is I had a bit of a trick. I had a VCR that recorded in hi-fi. So a VHS hi-fi. I'm sure most of you are familiar with those. The sound quality on these things can be very good. Almost digital quality. Really, I mean, they very, very high quality sound quality. And so what I used to do, let's just say drums, bass, keyboards, synthesizer pad, string pad, whatever it was, four tracks, right? So filled up all four tracks. Then I would, I would equalize and mix these, get them all at the right levels, and I would copy them onto the VHS Hi-Fi recorder. So now I've just reduced um, four tracks into two, left and right, stereo. So now I have a stereo copy of these four tracks, because I would pan this to the left and this to the right and, you know, put the instruments where I wanted them. So then I've got that on VHS Hi-Fi. Then I would bring that back to here, copy it back to here, onto two tracks because you want one on the left. And where's this pan control? I can't remember how to do this. This one would be the left channel. This one would be the right channel. And you would copy the VHS Hi-Fi track onto here. So now you've got a stereo copy of your, mu of your instrumental, basically, on here. And then you had two tracks that you could record on again. So you could do two vocals or you could do one vocal and then while you were bouncing this one to this one, you could add a second vocal. And then you could then you could erase this one because now you got your both your vocals on here. And then you could record something else like a guitar solo or something on here. So you get seven tracks. But the best part about that is that everything's in stereo. You didn't monetize everything, monotize everything. You could spread everything out. And that's what I, how I used to do it. It was kind of a workaround. And it worked. Around. <laughs> So that's how I did it. I'm going to play you another short clip of something that I recorded using that method, just with this machine here. I was often um, praised, I guess, or told that my recordings didn't sound like four-track recordings. Um, but you know, you when you're, I was, you know, I was young. I was writing love songs. I was writing, you know, songs for girls and stuff. And you know, um, when you when you have, uh, you know, a, a passion for making your music sound as good as it possibly can and you know a little bit about recording you can you can stretch these things you really can um, and you can make them sound better than what they're supposed to sound like this actually sounded pretty good you know it wasn't bad it ran at twice the speed the tape ran faster than normal so it, you'd had better better frequency response and noise reduction it has Dolby on it and stuff like that so um, it was. It did a good job, as you can hear. Those songs don't sound too bad. Um, again, I'll put a link down below. I do have a, a YouTube channel called Craig Tube Music, and really, right now, there's not anything on it as, as long as much as as far as um, my my own music. But I'm going to be working on putting my own music on there with lyrics, 
and a lot of it was recorded with one of these things. So um, go over there and subscribe, and then you'll see stuff start showing up in the very near future. But that's a four track, and that's how they work. Nowadays, they have unlimited tracks. You know, we had eight tracks, 16, 24, 32, they had these big tape reels that had tape that was this wide with all the tracks on it. See, a cassette has four tracks on it. That's how they're able to do that because a cassette has side A and side B. And side A has two tracks, which gives you the ability to record in stereo. You know, one track for left, one track for right. And then side B has two tracks, same thing. But that four track recorder, what it does is it uses all four of those tracks at the same time. So you can't flip the tape over, but it does use all four tracks. Quite an invention. Later on, they came up with um, machines that had hard drives in them and stuff. So you didn't have to use a cassette because cassettes, eh, they can sound good, but you know, they've got their limitations, right? Um, where with these four track recordings, like they have these little workstations, like, you know, Tascam, TIAC, you know, came out with them, Yamaha, and they have like eight tracks on them and there's a hard drive in there. And so now you can record eight tracks and it's digital. So you don't get all the hiss and noise and dropouts and everything like that. I never got to use one of those. Uh, if I had, oh, my music would have sounded a lot better. Um, but I didn't, I never got to that. By the time those came out, I was already starting to, to experiment with, uh, computer recording. And now, of course, you can get software for free that will record an unlimited amount of tracks. And it's digital and you can do it at very high resolution so that, you know, it sounds good and it's practically perfect. Anyway, that's how I did it. If I had one of these... A four track version of one of these when I was 20, 18, 20 years old. Huh. Huh. Oh boy. I would have done anything to have one of these, but of course they weren't around. Nowadays, you know, you can take one of these and you can, you know, it's, if it's a four track version, you can record a whole song, you can bounce tracks, you can do everything I just told you uh, about on with that four track down there. You can do it on here. And the quality is going to be far superior to what it would have been on that cassette machine down there. So that's a little bit of a background on how us old musicians used to record in our bedrooms on a four track. And I had a lot of friends who, who, who tried and they used to come knocking at my door, Craig, I need your help. I need your help. Can't get this to sound right. I was desperate. I was, I had to make my recording sound good. There was no way I wanted my recordings to sound horrible. So I figured it out and a lot of people figured it out. So anyway, that's that for this episode of uh, Vinyl TV. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support. Thanks for coming back. And we'll see you very soon here on Vinyl TV. And don't forget, vinyl is final. Thank you. Cheers.